Hello! Here we are in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. Um, it's gorgeous, obviously. We're on the rooftop of our Airbnb, which has been a great Airbnb and it's in an awesome neighborhood. Yep. We have just the longer we've been here, we've been here for eight days now, and every day we fall more and more in love with this area and this neighborhood. They have um, all kinds of, they have an organic market, they've got a couple of different yoga studios, art, there's so much, there's so much. So Wonderful much. restaurants. Anyway, we're gonna link the Airbnb in the show notes because this is a really cool place to stay. Our main points and things that come to mind while we're down here and while it's fresh on our minds, um, you know, especially because we love this place. We've been down here three times over the past three years um, during Thanksgiving and now um, during the rainy season here in July for my birthday, which was fantastic. I got to piggyback off of incredible pool party of uh, um, Griff and Caroline, so thank you guys, appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so I think Kelly, you'll kick it off. Okay, so as you know, we live in San Diego and it's a little bit noisy, so excuse the noises. You might hear roosters and mariachis, and, but that's the beauty of Mexico. Yeah. Um, so as you know, we live in San Diego and getting down to San Miguel de Allende is actually fairly easy. We calculated how many hours it took from door to door, and it can be anywhere from six to eight, just depending. So it does take a while, but ease of travel is actually pretty good. So we wanted to first talk about the CBX, which really will only apply to you if you live in Southern California and can get to the Tijuana border. Yeah. But if you are a Southern California resident or you you know frequent there, um, in fact, there were a lot of people that came down to Mexico for this wedding that we came to from Colorado, and it would have been easier for them to fly from Colorado to San Diego, go San Diego through the CBX, which I'll talk about in a minute, to the Tijuana airport, and then Tijuana fly into Leon or Carretera. Is that how you say it? Carret Carret I, anyway, there's. <laughs> The, there are two airports yeah. that are close to San Miguel de Allende. Leon um, seems to be the easier airport as we've chatted with everybody. There's For us, obviously, again, CBX, San Diego, we fly directly from Tijuana to Leon, and then it's an hour and a half ride um, down here. And that's kind of our next point of transportation. So we- Wait, I haven't touched on CBX yet. Okay. Okay, so CBX <laughs> is this really cool thing where, um, they have built a border crossing as part of the airport. So we drive from San Diego from our house to the CBX. It takes about 30 minutes, 40 minutes if there's traffic. Park at the CBX or usually we take an Uber. And then you check in, you cross the border through C CBX, cross border, I don't know what it's, cross border express I think is yep. what it means. But anyway, so you have to buy a ticket. So I think it's $30 each way per person um, to get across the CBX. But then once you do, you're in the Tijuana airport. So you don't like walk across the border. You don't drive across the border. You just walk through the CBX. So amazing. And then there's a VIP lounge, which uh, Priority Pass will get you into. If you have the American Express Platinum, you can get Priority Pass and access. Or I think it's $25, the equivalent of $25 to $27 just to go stop in. Well worth it. They have a, a great buffet. I took some pictures. We'll add them into the video. Um, and then you fly out of Tijuana. And what's great is it's a domestic flight. So you're not doing all of the international stuff. You've already done that. So you fly from, uh, we fly from Tijuana to uh, Leon. And then from Leon, we have this awesome driver, Daniel Hernandez. We're gonna link his information too, because he's phenomenal. He's like fourth generation San Fifth Miguel. Fifth generation, and he's been helping Kelly and Kelly's pa parents coming down here and traveling and their friends, I think for you know, 15, 20 years. plus years. So, so we really trust him yeah. and he knows everybody in the area. So if there's any, because a lot of people have concerns about transferring and transportation in Mexico Agreed. and the safety of it. But we never worry when we yeah, have Daniel. Reliable, his, safe, yeah. smart. Um, he's been here such a long time. Um, if you has, have a group, it's a big air conditioned van. Yeah, great He'll, knowledge of the area. Just, yeah. just great. He'll five, bring five cervezas stars. Yeah. Uh, if you ask him. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah 10 stars. Um, so we'll, we'll link that also. And then the food is, I want to talk about yeah, it, the, but the, I'll let you start. The priority of this coming down here is maybe some art, but food probably is. Numero uno. Yeah, wow. The food is beyond, and we've eaten in most places around the world. The food here is probably the best in the yeah. entire world consistently. Yeah. Amazing. Every time you poke your head into some other, you know, corridor, corridor, hallway, door opening, it's a secret garden and hole in the wall that has Michelin level food. 
Um, the service is incredible. People are friendly. And I mean, just from the presentation to the, the quality of the food to the diversity, um, a lot of Mexican food, but you just a little bit of everything. Um, and it is absolutely phenomenal. So um, what would be your number one? What are you thinking? If you just had well, to I was going to throw in the fact that the prices are also really, really yes, yes. very fair. Um, very they're fair. not dirt cheap, but they are not. They are nowhere near what we would pay in San Diego for exactly. the same level of quality of food. Yes. So um, my number one, you know, I I think I found a new number one oh, this what's, time. What's that one? Tostevre. Yeah. Fantastic. It's, there's like seven tables. It's tiny. I mean, maybe it's so twenty tiny. seats total. Maybe yeah. less. So you have to make a reservation, but the the service is with a smile. Everybody is so friendly and kind, and the drinks, oh my gosh, yeah, fantastic! The food comes out on these um, tostadas. I guess that's why it's called tostadre. But anyway, um, and it's just piled high. So don't over order because we did that the first night, and then we were so full we were uncomfortable. It's everything is a piece of art the way that it comes out, but the flavors are on point. So amazing. We've been there twice and we're contemplating maybe grabbing one more before we have to head to the airport. So yeah. you can't go wrong. Um, that, that one is amazing. We found a new favorite bre breakfast place today, actually, which is called R Rustica or Rustica. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll link we'll link our favorites. Um, yeah. But then the rooftop dining here is incredible. The skyline is, yep. you know, I mean, you can see a little bit from behind us, but this isn't even the best view in the city. Yeah, we had dinner a couple nights ago, and um, it was the thunderstorm was in the, was just kind of behind all of the cathedrals. I think that was Friday night. Mm -hmm. And uh, is Antonia Bistro at the top of the Palomar Hotel that has just this f epic view of the whole city. Um, the whole city skyline, all the cathedrals, and it was beautiful. A little bit of rain, but fantastic. And again, food was it went incredible. Amazing. As well. So yeah, we have. I think we have. The, those are a few of that. What we've been there's Inside Cafe um, that I love. It's a really tight. Again, another little hole in the wall, but the high end and the quality of food is impressive. Great every, happy hour every there. Time. Exactly. In fact, we got That's caught true. in a in a rainstorm and thunderstorm there, and the power went out, and we were sitting right across from the kitchen because yep. you can watch them cook. Didn't skip a beat. Just kept on going. Propane was still pumping. Yeah. Uh, they're just it's the service is so um, above bar everywhere that you go above and beyond. Even at Antonio Bistro, where it was it was kind of cold the other night, and it was yeah. It, Thunderstorming and stuff. Out. They brought a yeah. blanket and they're clean. I mean, everything is just wonderful. It's so worth the trip if you love food. Yeah. And it's healthy too. You can find gluten free, you can find vegan if you want. Um, pretty much anything that your uh, diet requires, you, you can find in the city. You just have to look for it. So we could go on. We could do an entire yeah. YouTube about food, and hopefully we'll add we'll add in pictures <laughs> of our food and restaurants and yeah, stuff like they, that. Hopefully they'll be here or somewhere. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if it gets in there. Yeah. Well, we got to put some pictures. But anyway. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, well, pictures should be in here. So you know, later. So edit. we'll go on to the next thing. Um, art. Art. Yes. The city is known for art, and I'll let you talk about it because yeah, you're the artist. I think it's on the same level of food for the city. It is a. You know, the art has been here, is brought over by the colonials, the Spanish, 500 years ago, of bringing that, bringing this culture, di well, different culture. Um, it's pretty brutal once you start looking into the history, but um, the spirituality, the art, the uh, creatives that are here, the expats that are here, the Mexican artists that are here, um, the galleries that are all over the place from physical art, contemporary, um, everything you can imagine is here. Um, again, the same thing. You just walking down a cobblestone street, you just look in uh, to a doorway, and it's a secret garden, like le you know, level ten thousand secret garden. Then it's another art gallery with some paintings from somebody or some sculpture sculptures, and it is impressive. The detail and the level of you know craftsmanship, artists, the creatives that have come here. Um, and have created an incredibly unique city that is really one of a kind. It's if, um, kind of old world culture of indigenous culture tied in with, you know, the Spanish colonial and now, you know, we're here in Mexico in 2023, so. I just find that everything in this city is art. I mean, everything from the presentation of food 
to the plants, to the, or like you said, yeah. the architecture. I mean, even this background, like, right? That's yeah. just our kind of, it's beautiful, like this, yeah. If love you it. love aesthetic, you, you can't go wrong with the city because everything, yeah. Every around, like Blake was saying, around every corner, there's something more gorgeous than the next thing you just saw to look at. And I mean, it's, it's like not if, not even that it one ups the next thing. It's just that it's different and unique, and it's the, the uniqueness knows no end here, and it's fascinating. And that's why we come here because that's that's kind of what makes it special. I think it inspires creativity too. Exactly, one hundred percent. It just gets the juices flowing. So. Um, um, and then one more for the art thing is uh, if you're here again walking around the city there are many galleries everywhere um, but a place to stop by for art is uh, Fabrica de la Hora I think I'm pronouncing that right um, but it's an old textile mill that it's been turned into uh, multi-design cult, you know, cultural you know, restaurants and galleries and so there are a lot of artists visual artists that are there make sculptures paintings they're in the hallways painting it is a um, kind of a and a one-stop shop for all types of art um, that, that that are there and fantastic. So, and, and I've spent a good bit of time there walking around. Um, We've just befriended an artist there that's yeah. got a, a studio. His name's Filippo. We'll also link his yeah, stuff. Fantastic He's artist. phenomenal. Yep. And he does a really unique thing where he paints um, portraits of people based on the colors that he feels within their essence. Yeah. Just right up my alley. Um, I love that. So he's he just is really worth checking out. He's one of a kind. Um, also, the I mean, like the necklace I'm wearing, I, I got inside of the um, one of the galleries there, made by a local artist, all silver. She actually does work does a lot of work with crystals and quartz and um, I mean, she somebody into the spirituality. This, I, I love that. She, she makes David Yerman look like a, you know, JV football team of just the <laughs> imbuing this with. Well, you know, she charges it. Yeah. You know, she try if you know much <laughs> about crystals, she charges the crystals, she clears the crystals, she then sets an intention into them. So really, really, really very special and unique stuff. And yep. I think at, um, it, it's, it's not, you know, inexpensive, but it's fair. Um, okay, so we wanted to talk about while I'm on that dollar conversion ATMs. We may not be the best experts here, but when we come, I usually bring some pesos from home. Usually I'll get like an excess, bring them home, and then I've got a little bit to get started on the next trip, so I'm not kind of looking for that next nearest ATM. But we uh, we prefer ATMs that are sort of like in a hotel, next to a hotel, you know, outside of the big city center area where you might have people kind of lurking around. Um, it's really safe in this city, so we haven't noticed any uh, any problem at all, or felt unsafe at all. But but where I was going with this is, we had uh, one of the times we stopped to the ATM, we had this really lovely lady who was an expat, American expat here, and she said, uh, "Do you know about the accepting the 6.6 percent charge? That's what it is right now. It might be different when you come." So we said, no, she said, you don't need to accept it. So this is a big deal because I had taken out two, I had done two withdrawals where I had accepted the 6.6% conversion yeah. and essentially yeah. paid 6.6 extra on what I was taking out. So she said, you ha you can decline it and it will still give you your money. So thank God she told us that because it actually saved a lot of money on subsequent withdrawals. So you have to accept the first one that's like the ATM charge, right? Because that's anywhere. But then it will ask if you want to pay the additional additional 6.6 .6 conversion fee. And again, that conversion fee may be later, uh, may be different when you go later. So just hit decline because it'll save you a lot of money. And um, and then just, you know, make sure that you're aware of your surroundings as always when you go to ATMs in foreign countries. But um, we actually, this wasn't something we were gonna talk about, but it's important. The safety of San Miguel, I think is incredible. I feel safer walking around the streets here than I do in San Diego. And that's just me, but, um, but we have an experience on, in three different trips that we've been here, three different times, even trips with our small children. We've never experienced a moment where we felt unsafe. And that's true uh, with me riding alone in a taxi or an Uber. I have always felt very comfortable. So we you know, can't guarantee, but as far as Mexico goes, I think San Miguel is one of the safest cities that you can travel to. So, okay, so let's talk about um, the different Airbnbs and hotel levels that you can stay at here. So I'd say starting off to the, uh, between the Belmont um, and Rosewood are probably the two nicest hotels that you could stay down here. So we've 
um, our, the, where we, we, we spent some time at the Belmont, um, and both are both incredibly nice, uh, fantastic. Um, however, our time down here, we've been at Airbnbs um, or houses, um, and we've really enjoyed that experience because it feels maybe a little more authentic, but we do have our privacy, um, and we've been coming down with our uh, six of us, so the five of, the five of our family and, uh, um, and Kelly's Usually mom. Usually my mom. Um, but uh, it, and it depends. I mean, what else? What, what would you say about that? I mean, I've loved the Airbnb situation because we, I mean, we had somebody come in and make breakfast for us the first the first trip that we came. Um, you can have somebody come in and, and clean in between. It's, but it's up to you. Like this trip, yeah. we didn't have anybody come at all, and we felt like we had our privacy. The first time we stayed, we were with the kids, so we had a little pool, and we had like the pool guy came, and then the gardener came. And there was, it was great, but there was like lots of people in and out, so it didn't feel like we had our own space as much. Yep. So it really is, it, you can tailor it to whatever you want. There are so many different amazing boutique hotels. Yeah, oh, that's true. Again, Great it's point. the same thing as you know we were saying before. It's like one is cuter than the next. And we, the same thing as you walk through. There's just one after another after another with some other unique design feature and waterfall and incredible woodwork and, and art. rooftop terrace. Rooftop, yeah, it's just in incredible. So yeah. there's and we'll kind of we'll give you kind of our little take of. Um, uh, in, in the show notes of like kind of what what that means kind of what we're talking about right now to elaborate a little bit more and I've walked by hostels that look like they're really you know well cared for that they're clean they're in safe areas and those are probably so I think that you can do anything you can go you yep. can stay in a hostel as a single person and probably have no problem at all with your safety all the way up to the Belmond which I think is the creme de la creme in San Miguel de Ende and and we've been to all and I would stay at any yep. um, so so it really just depends on your budget and what you're looking for in terms of an experience. But if you're coming with a group, um, I think an Airbnb is great. If you're coming with kids and you really want a pool, but you don't want to pay for Rosewood prices or Belmont prices, um, you can do a day pass at the pool. So that's a that's an option at um, both Live Aqua. Oh, well, I forgot. Yeah, Live Aqua is another great hotel. But the location good. is we like Live Aqua, but it's out there. Yeah, it's a little farther north. So the Rosewood is, I think, I think it's situationally in terms of walking and yeah. Um, Between yeah. the Rosewood and Belmont of hotels, it's the best kind of to be close to everything. Yeah, walking and the Rosewood yeah. I think takes the cake on location above the Belmont also because it's it's not as hilly. So the Belmont has great vistas, but um, so does the Rosewood, and the Rosewood is on a flatter area, so you can get to and from places yep. without having to hoof it as much. But if that's your thing, Belmont's best. Yep. Um, okay, so kids. We've been to San Miguel de Ande three times, twice with kids, one without. We love having our kids. We also have loved not having the kids. Yep. <laughs> so um, so here's the, here's the scoop on kids. Our kids have traveled a lot of places in the world. They've been really lucky. They say the San Miguel Dande is their favorite place, but they also love to eat, maybe more than the next kid. Um, so they, I think that they love the variety of places to eat, the fact that they can get a smoothie and it's like this big, and um, they can get, you know, I, they just pretty much eat their way through the city. And it's great because it's pretty inexpensive, so we don't yeah. mind. Um, but there's not a ton of places for kids to go play here in the city. It really isn't a city that's built for children. Our I mean, kids, yeah, some of the sidewalks are, you know, about this very wide, narrow. cobblestone, cars going by. So yeah, if you've young got, children is not ideal. It's not best. No. If you have kiddos in a stroller, kids that very get tight. tired, like little legs get tired and stuff, I would maybe recommend not to bring them to San Miguel de Ende until they're a little bit older. Um, when we last came, we had 12... 12 year old, a nine year old, and a six year old. And they did great, but we did have to go, you know, take breaks a lot more often and stuff because they can't walk as far for as long. Yep. So, um, but you can do the day pass so the kids can go play at the pool at a number of places around here. Um, there's hot springs nearby we haven't been to, but we hear it's great for kids. You can go horseback riding. So you just have to get creative. Um, also, at the Fabrica de Aurora, there's a place called Geek and Coffee or Coffee and Geeks one or the other and they have like kind of a cute little play area there's also a facebook for like san miguel de ende with families um so explore all those options they're they're cool um art outlets too if your kids are artistic one year we made um 
Sugar Skulls and also the Mohingangas masks, the masks yeah. uh, for, for the Day of the Dead. Yep. And the kids loved that. that and it awesome. was it was so cool. Such a great, great experience. So there are a lot of different things that you can explore with kids, but if they're littles, maybe leave them behind or wait to come until they're bigger. Yep. So, and then we were going to talk about walking through the city. Uh, well, I mean, that kind of ties kind of into is like, so everything here is cobblestone. So if you have heels, don't work here in San Miguel at, at all. So <laughs> it's, you know, good flip-flops, good walking shoes, because everything in the city, you know, within multiple mile radius is all cobblestone. Um, and there are no smooth sidewalks or roads anywhere in the city. So just be prepared for that. Otherwise, it'd be good. Yeah, bring comfortable walking <laughs> shoes for sure. You will be so glad you did. And um, flip-flops are even tough because some of the stones are slippery, so your feet slip in and out. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, and and you have to be careful because, like you said, they, they can be really narrow sidewalks, and cars are sometimes, they're pretty good, but sometimes they're going fast. I almost got hit today. I didn't tell you about that. <laughs> so, um, so just, you know, be careful, come prepared pretty much it. There's not a lot of uh, shoe stores once you get to San Miguel de Ende, so like if you didn't bring your tennis shoes, you're kind of in trouble. So make sure that you bring some sort of comfortable walking shoe. Um, if you don't want to walk, taxi can, yeah. or Uber yep. is very available, very quick, very easy. We did find that... I would say Uber on average is half the price of getting a taxi. We so. think maybe taxis were jacking up the prices for the Probably. gringos. No, I'm not sure. So we, we never asked, hey, how much is it to the, the place we're going? Because, But know. I think you should. I think if, yeah, if I you know where you're going, just pop your head in sure. and say how much to get to here. And if it sounds fair, go. But we were noticing that we were getting upcharged by like 40, 50% in the taxi versus the Uber. That said, all the taxi drivers have been very yeah. friendly. They've they safe weren't. drivers. Really nice, good. Yeah, and easy. when you get ripped off in, in Mexico, it's like you're paying an extra $2, $3 over the Uber. So it's really not a big deal, but it's just, you know, it, that adds up over time. Yeah. So uh, worth knowing. And then rain was we another should, thing yeah, we were going to talk about. Let's talk about the rain. So <laughs> we'll have that kind of show you what that looked like here. So it was really a little windy right now. But the rain came in. There was like a really significant front that came through, and they got a ton of rain really rapidly again going back to how the streets and so this the city's on a hill it's all built cobblestone streets and so it kind of is like a flash flood if you will uh, it was um, a flash flood yeah. we went in <laughs> got two margaritas and when we came out we could have kayaked through the streets That's of true. san miguel yeah. like no no exaggeration if we can let's splice and, in and some I video feel like we are it is the rainy season right now yeah. july um so you know be prepared for that um you know, so, and, you know, stay, stay inside and the power goes out. Yeah, lot. very so, easily. So we lost power. power in the house and just yep. happened to have a flashlight that we brought. So, yeah, do, you know, it's Mexico. So yep. things happen. Just be prepared. But that said, in the rainy season, it really hasn't it's, been, other than the flash flood, it really hasn't been bad. It's, it's been, been great weather. The temperature has been incredible. There have been, you can see the clouds that are kind of moving behind us. Um, the like the afternoon, it tends to drizzle a little. Yeah, but aside from that, I mean, it has been incredible temperatures, you know, some rain, but I'm, I'm from Florida, so it's not that big of a deal anyways. Um, but we've we've loved this time down here as well. It's been really fantastic. Um, yeah. Anything so, else? I mean, there's so much. I feel like we <laughs> could, we, this could be a two hour yeah. video. We just love San Miguel so much. So maybe we'll do a follow on video at some point. Um, sure. If you know, if there's questions or suggestions, leave us a comment. We would love that. Yep. Um, if you like this video, you found it helpful, subscribe, give us a like, we'd yep. love that. Um, otherwise, until next time, hasta until luego, time. we'll see you Adios. later. Bye. Bye.